what teammates tell you and putting it into action? Um, it comes with watching film. Um, see, Hans um, sends me the film, and we, we sit down and watch it. And um, I just know their game plan is being a high wall, put two on me. So, therefore, when Rudy roll, it's going to pull one side in. So, one corner is going to be open. Or they're going to bump Rudy on the roll, so the wing going to be open. And Or if they don't put two on me, I'm just going to attack. So, pretty much just watching. I think watching film is, is big, man. So, I, it helps me a lot. Rudy, how would you grade the way you guys have played defense through these first three games? I mean, it's hard to grade, but um, I think we've been doing it all year. You know, I just feel like we our level of urgency, uh, especially in the first quarter, uh, is what's been the big difference, you know, between the regular season and the playoffs. Uh, you know, and we've been doing it every single minute. You know, whoever's on the floor, you know, the ball pressure is there, the communication is there, um, the rebounding, you know, is there. And uh, and also, I, I, I'm really proud of the way we've been uh, just getting back in transition, you know, so it's uh, just our awareness, you know, our, our willpower and our focus has been uh, up a notch and it's, you know, it's carrying over on the, you can see it on the, on the floor. And you look like you were having... Some fun in the fourth quarter, so I like go dap up some dude in the, the first row. Do you know that guy? I was just he was no, wearing I a Wolves jersey. Some um, some A ones, pretty much. Um, it's not every day that you see that. Well, I see it, but um, I was excited, man, to see someone courtside with my shoes on. So you know, just showed him a little love. And you know, Coach Finch has been trying to get that balance for you of you know getting off when there's two and then knowing when to attack for a long time. What was it? Maybe about like when Carl went out, that that really did seem to click for you, where it became kind of a night after night thing. When Carl went out, as in tonight, or you mean when? No, he, when just he it got seemed hurt? like it seemed like that's when you really kind of took that next step as a playmaker uh, when he got injured. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, you know, when 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 Cat goes down, it definitely puts more pressure on everybody for sure because he's a walking twenty-five and ten guy. So, I mean. It was on me to get my guys involved, get them easier looks, and and still be able to be aggressive. So, you know, just trying to do it a little bit more when he when he's out. Are you a big late '90s wrestling fan? Late '90s wrestling fan? No, not at all. Um, <laughs> you talking about my my? Uh, yeah. Um, I was trying to get Rudy to do it with me, but he would never make eye contact with me, which was crazy because I threw you the ball for the M one. Let's might talk be, about I that. I might be concussed. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I did see the. Yeah, the, I'm trying to I get like him that. to do it with me because uh, you know. Boy, I was it's, proud. Yeah, I was it's proud. all good. I mean, my boy got the M1, man. I was just, I was just happy about that. Rudy, um, the Suns missed a lot of baskets in the paint at the ba at the bucket. A lot of that is because of your presence there. Do you notice them being maybe less aggressive or maybe a little apprehensive when you're there? Sure. That's what I do best, you know. I try to, <laughs> uh, you know, be being a presence, you know, give confidence to my teammates, and uh, you know, and, and and make sure I'm there there for them. And uh, you know, I'm trying to get some blocks, but they don't really try me. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's better than any block. You know, just try to take away the rim and, and force them into tough twos, or you know, or turn them over. Are you guys in a zone now where, you know, you're in the postseason, you're doing something that a Tim Wolves team hasn't done in 20 years, and it's uh, nobody wants to screw up how good the momentum is by what the plan is. I mean, is that kind of like one of the senses that you have on this? I think we're just embracing the moment. You know, we we have only one goal in mind, and, you know, when we really try to make sure that we don't get distracted by any of the, you know, e -ha -ha, the success, the, you know, uh, the, the, the ups and downs. Like, we just we just locked in. And you can see it with our approach individually, collectively. Um, you know, we're not satisfied with being a 3-0 in the first round. Uh, you know, and it's, uh, it's cool to be a part of that. You know, if, as a young team that, you know, uh, like you said, like the Chimarros haven't, got that type of success yet. Um, 
it's important also to to understand the opportunity that we have, and we all do. You know, so it's uh, How it's fun. How important was that week off between the end of the regular season and the beginning? Was that significant? Uh, for sure. Um, spe- I mean, my first two times in the playoffs, um, I wasn't able to prepare like that because we was in the playing game. So, I mean, for me, I will say it was super important. I got in the best shape of my life that week. Um, I was able to really understand, like, a playoff game plan and learn how to execute everything and just seeing how everything goes. So it was it was definitely fun for me. So I will say, like, that it was that was the best thing ever, being able to prepare for a week and learn everything. The coaching staff did a phenomenal job, a man. Job. I, will, I will say that. Rudy, what's the biggest – development or change you've seen in Ant's game this year compared to the first year you played with him? I mean, we, it's playmaking for sure. You know, his, his ability to see what's happening on the floor, uh, you know, and, and his ability to pick the defense apart regardless of the coverage. You know, last year and early this year, they were putting two, two guys on him and he, he didn't really like that. And I feel like over the course of the year, he started to realize and embrace the fact that when they put two on you is <laughs> this is the highest form of respect, you know, and he has, he has teammates that can knock down shots, that can finish at the rim. And uh he's you know, he's he's put he's put the work in, you know, I've seen him watch film every, almost every day. I've seen him like being willing to um yeah, to just to learn and get better and you know, and it's it's paid huge dividends for our team and I still feel like, you know, it's I mean it's it's, it's crazy to think that he's just 22 years old, but he's still got a lot of growth there. But it's, uh, you know, when he does that, uh, our team just, you know, just goes here, and I feel like it's, it's unguardable. I mean, it's team's gonna try to throw different coverage at him, and uh, you know, if, if he's able to to see what's happening and then pick them apart, uh, you know, it's it's tough to guard. Yeah, we we see multiple times throughout the night. Mike will go up to somebody like Carl or Jaden after maybe a tough call, goes against them, try to calm them down, get them to move on to the next play. Two years ago, you guys kind of maybe dealt with some composure issues when it comes to that stuff in the playoffs. How have how important has he been in kind of those moments for you guys and trying to get everybody to move on? Maybe when a call or, or something doesn't really go your way. Uh, I mean, I think everyone here knows how <clears throat> important Mike is to the team. Um, as far as those things, um, I don't, I don't know. But uh, as a group, my teammates definitely stay on me about leaving the refs alone and not bothering them, getting another text. So I wouldn't say it's all just Mike. It's just the whole team. I mean, everybody: Rudy, Cal, Monte, Finchy, everybody. Like, hey, we we got to calm down. We we bitching a lot. So um, they do a great job of, of staying on us about that. And knowing that they were desperate for a win tonight, did it feel like in that third quarter when you guys really started to pull away, did it feel, could you feel it at all that maybe you guys broke their spirit a little bit? Nope. Um, we we won't, uh, we don't, we don't think we broke their spirit until we win game four. We got to win game four and then we can say we broke their spirit. Um, because you never know, man. You just, a lot of crazy things happen. Um, so we got to come out and be the most desperate team once again. Um, we can't think that they're going to give us the game because they're down 3-0. They want to win a game. They don't want to go out and get swept. So we got to come out and, and be ready to compete at a high level, even more than we did in the first three games. And we're going to be ready. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Okay. Just want to be aggressive. Um, like I said, since before game one, just see what the defense gives me. Um, wanted to uh, stop as much stuff in the game early. And also just saw what the defense gave me in first play. Just got a chance to do some uh, – play, you know, use, use my offense and, uh, you know, find some open shots. So testament to my teammates, game plan, uh, just finding different ways to score. Carl, it seems like Ant, kind of like in the last month or two, has really leveled up playmaking-wise, almost kind of like mm-hmm. before you were, right before you got hurt to kind of yeah. now. How have you just kind of seen that that growth happen? I just think he's making the simple play. He's doing a good job of, you know, seeing two, two people on him and making the pass to the corner and the wing. And, and I know it sounds easy, but at the same time, too, not only is he making the pass, he's actually getting the ball there, you know? So that's a big key to the to the playmaking. So he's just making the right decision in the air, um, whether it be pass to the wing, pass to the corner. <coughs> um, he's doing a great job, and obviously he's one of the best slashers in the NBA. He's one of the best finishers. So uh, it's tough. It's tough to guard him, and especially when he's also making his teammates better. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's really, really tough to uh, plan for him. 
Uh, just stay disciplined. You know, I think what's great about this team is we have guys who have playoff uh, experience and have made it past first round, second round, even conference finals. So uh, <clears throat> just uh, I think everyone in this locker room is understanding the team that's on the other side, how great they are. And, you know, as you see, even in the fourth quarter, if they're hitting shots like that, it gets really tough to uh, compete with them. So um, we understand we got to be disciplined. We have to continue to have the same approach defensively offensively just keep uh, trusting each other. I think that's what's really great about us right now is you're seeing a team that's really buying into each other and, and sacrificing and doing the little things for each other so we can see ourselves win and um, doing a lot of great things out there as a team. For a while, I think you've been here long enough and had ups and downs where the, the unit has in terms of not throwing the first punch and then when you throw a punch, they absorb it. And now you're in a position where you guys are not only throwing the first punch but absorbing punches they're throwing. Are you able to explain in words like that feeling in the midst of the game of the team trying to throw a punch and then not even really putting much of it in there? Uh, I just, I, I think it's first a testament to these guys in this locker room that everyone's buying into as winning and being disciplined and <clears throat> having emotional uh, discipline and capacity to understand that there's going to be uh, ebbs and flows of the game as well as peaks and valleys and uh, we're just going to continue to buy into each other and stay true to us and um, keep trusting in each other and I think that that's what you're seeing a lot from us is uh, uh, something that we talked about since before at training camp and um, media day it was always about how we feel this team is connected and we feel this team has unity and something that was going to really help us when you know things got tough or we're going to be in situations like this, so we're just leaning into the, to you know those words of you know buying into each other and, and trusting us as a team, and, and I think that you can see it. Um, just I think it's the coaching staff, uh, the work, you know, they, the fact that you know they've uh, definitely helped me out tremendously being reintegrated, and um, I think to the, the staff and medical staff and everyone, you know, this was supposed to be the game that we're talking about, I get cleared to do 505, so um, this is my fifth game back, and, you know, today was supposed to be the day we just talked about me doing sizzle and all that stuff, so, um, testament to our medical staff and people who uh, helped me get back here and, and, and heal in a much quicker fashion than thought of, so, um, you know, I just wanted to do my part, I understood the importance and the, what, what could happen this year. And I wanted to be out here with my brothers, and I wanted to be out here playing basketball and doing what I love and understanding that we have an opportunity to do something special. And um, I'm happy to be here playing with them. Coach Finch told us right before you came back that you had come to him presenting some ideas of things that, that you could do when you get back in. What what of those ideas have you been able to execute? Just sacrificing, um, being willing to... Uh, you know, Nas did a great job of having the ball flow through him and, and uh, capitalizing opportunities when he could shoot. Um, and I wanted to be able to do that even more. So um, I think one of the things was just, you know, even being more unselfish with the ball and letting the game, you know, dictate if I was going to get 30, 40, or if not. And if it, if, I, if it doesn't dictate that I'm having one, I'm gonna get one of those nights, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be in a situation where you're playing like these games like we have and find ourselves on the winning end. Uh, that's everything, <laughs> everything is worth it then. So, uh, you know, certain nights like tonight, I get to be a little more aggressive and, and, and take what the defense gives me and, and score the ball. And some other nights, it may not be the night for me to be shooting, but for me to play make and be aggressive in my play make and aggressive and um, executing the game plan and being the catalyst of that. So, um, whatever it is, whether it be offensively or defensively. So, I just told him that, you know, we're going to get to a point where it's not going to be about. It's, it's it's not about any of that. It's about putting one in the left column and finding ourselves dwindling that number we have on the board over there down every single night. What's happening in 